Well, hello, me lovelies. It's me, Ned Natter, with the unpasteurized and unfiltered Ned Natter Show, ready to brighten your day. I love to gossip after a long day of taking care of things down here on me Florida farm. But first up, it's great to be with you again. Thanks so much for your lovely comments and messages. It's time for a good old natter. But remember, I don't chat about the news and current affairs. You don't want me reminding you of everything you've already heard and seen, do you? (laughs) I'm here to give you a break from it all. A good laugh. Even when it is only once a week on a Wednesday. (laughs) Remember, you can always listen to me shows again at nednatter.com. Yep, okay, well, put everything down. No, everything. I mean you too. Come on, it's time for the Ned Natter Show. And you can't miss this. (laughs) Well... We've reached the start of season three, and I'm still here. <laughs> well, I am, but next week, me wife Elsie and mum old Nan are off to gamble. Yup, they booked a trip to Atlantic City. Yup, close to home. And it's all because Mystic Madeline's told the wife that Vegas is a bad bet for her. On the other hand, old Nan is furious. She loves Vegas and has good reason. See, last time she won big. They're going by bus too. And before you ask, no, 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 they're not on the no-fly list. (laughs) Even when they should be. (laughs) They're on Mystic Madeline's no-air travel fortune-telling advice list. (laughs) She says it's going to be bad luck flying to New Jersey. Oh, dear. I'm just glad old Nan hasn't got a concealed carry permit, you know. Or she'd be uh, concealing a small armoury. Ideal for all eventualities, see. She hates strangers getting too close. And of course, if you knew her well enough, you'd be happy to keep a respectable distance anyway. (laughs) Yup, her breath is the worst part. In fact, the 900 plus miles from here to New Jersey is fine with me. Added to that, old Nan hasn't been in the best of moods since her birthday a few days back. Oh no. Well, let's call it a chain of events. Or disasters, more like. I need to remind you up front, though, that Nan is never in the best of moods. No, no. In fact, just have a look at your dictionary. Yep, that's right. Turn to the word miserable. That's right, and you'll see the meaning of the word there in black and white. There it is, old Nan, a miserable kind of bird, (laughs) imported accidentally from England. In Florida, it's well known as an invasive species. Can be poisonous, aggressive, and highly obnoxious. (laughs) Um, Oh dear, well that's her, that's her all right. Anyway, I'm getting off track a bit there. Well, first up, me lawyer brother Nelson Natter and his new wife, the Japanese sex therapist Heiner in Beverly Hills, sent old Nan a $500 gift card. But she decided that was mean after he told her that he charged his clients $350 an hour. <laughs> and his wife gets around 200 too. Old Nan reckons she was worth more than an hour. Well, to be honest, don't debate that with me, Nan. <laughs> then me brother, young Buck, up there in Pennsylvania, sent her flowers. Oh, dear. Doesn't he know that I get a fever and she can't drink or eat them either? Anyway, after that, there was a torrent of unpleasant remarks about poor Buck being tight-fisted. <laughs> well, I'll just say, uh, you know, farmer right now. Yep. Actually, I think it's her that makes me stir, you know. (laughs) Then next up, it was the cake. Not good enough. It only had ten candles. You know, that's roughly one per decade, actually. I reckoned 96 would have started a blaze in me farmhouse. (laughs) It would have been easier, you know, to stick a blowtorch on top of the thing. (laughs) But that wasn't it. Oh no, more drama arrived with the male stripper I hired. Well, she specifically asked for that. And I thought, well, she's getting on a bit. You know, give her a, give her a break. You know, why not? Actually, I should have thought first. <laughs> but I didn't. 
So this firefighter was the plan, you know, but uh, the firefighter costume got messy early that day at another party. Yeah, apparently it had something to do with jealousy and a food fight. <laughs> anyway, he ended up looking like a birthday cake gone wrong, only with added whipped cream and sprinkles. Yep, made of broken glass. <laughs> so he arrived not only late, but dressed as Taz and as an alternative. See, that's all he could dream up on the way over. Yep, a torn beige beach towel and a few knots. So, first up, and believe me, old Nan looks nothing like Jane. No, no. Uh, she was having a bad day too, and that's almost impossible to describe. <laughs> well, I'll help you a bit. Pick any B-movie monster you like and imagine it with a walking stick. <laughs> Close enough, I'd say. Despite her mood, she still had to go at his loincloth, didn't she? Oh dear, well, once he got close enough, that was. But, you know, he managed to dodge her advances. Yep, he was a honed pro. Oh dear. <laughs> so, Nan was ready with a stream of her nasty F-words again. And venom instead. Oh dear. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's mostly spit that finds its way along the side of her dentures, actually. <laughs> Added to that, only three of those F-words were fat, fairy and fraud the rest were what you'd expect <laughs> he wasn't happy and old nan went away empty-handed yep lucky for him <laughs> he only shed a few tears at the end and i don't know if it, he was hurt or relieved to be out of there <laughs> anyway the old crow soon got a mitts on a reliable old friend instead yep sure a full bottle of whiskey one from a case of 12, the wife Elsie had bought her as a birthday gift, yeah. A more appropriate one, I suppose. Fortunately, we didn't see much of her after that. And believe me, it couldn't have worked out better. <laughs> Staying on the subject of family, I had an annoying message left on me voicemail. Yep, from me brother Buck Natter, and he's back in Pennsylvania now, and all the cactus spines have worked their way out of his body. But the call was Buck asking to be on me show. Well, I've told him before he can't. For one, nobody would understand a word he says. He's got a broad accent like no other. And even I have trouble understanding him. Just listen to me voicemail if you like. You have messages. Now, do you see what I'm up against? I mean, he's even got his phone right next to the AC. <laughs> oh dear. He's obviously listening to me show now because he's calling. Oh dear again. Oh, excuse me real quick. I'll just uh, get him out of the way, right? No, Buck, I am not taking the art of bliss. No, you don't sound a bit like me. No chance, Buck. I'm not going to get me listeners to think about it. Oh, yes, you will. But, Buck, you always use the F word, and F and blind is your game. It's your favourite word. Keep it clean. <laughs> you can't even keep your boots clean, me old mucker. No, I've not got to get on with me show, and that's the end of it. No, it's just no, I can't do it. No, not all podcasts use the F word either, and mine definitely doesn't. Look, Buck, I'm hanging up, I'm hanging up. Yep, bye. Yep, and I'm sure you know where to stick it to. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, I think I need to change my number real quick. I wonder if someone's already taken 911. <laughs> Having Buck on me show would be me worst nightmare. This is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Show, and when I'm not here, you can always find me and me shows at nednat.com. On the subject of nightmares, I'm still having these really weird dreams. There's something in the air, yep, something different. The nightmares I have are often about bringing new guests on me show, yep, and Buck's a prime example. <laughs> but my worst dream recently was about having two guests a new Democrat Senate hopeful. An old rush 
my incontinent neighbour and full-time supporter of the Republican incumbent. <laughs> oh dear. Well, in my dream, I have to try and moderate the rhetoric. <laughs> in real life, you know what I do? I just turn off the microphone, yep, and have a nap until it was all over. <laughs> Me farm dog Clay's got problems. Well, I call them two acres, and I don't mean piece of land. <laughs> he tried to jump a barbed wire fence to chase the mail van. Oh, yep. Yeah. He carried on just fine. But you know, those, those things that hang down under his tail got hooked. <laughs> oh, dear. Yep. Yeah. He was hanging on by them when I caught up with the poor old mucker. Yeah. Only now he's associated pain with the mail carrier. And he wants to kill her. <laughs> his only advantage as a dog is he can reach them with his tongue. Maybe that helps soothe him. <laughs> I don't really want to speculate though. <laughs> on the other hand, me farm cat young Charles dodges most things, particularly things on wheels. <laughs> What's worse is me daughter young Dolly's been pushing her pet young ram around, but in the wheelbarrow. Yep. <laughs> it's a combination for Charles, a bad one. Yep. But in things, on wheels. You know, I reckon me poor old cat's about to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> While on the subject of young Dolly, though, she's obsessed with this little book I bought her recently, and it's all about the Egyptians. Well, I want it to broaden her horizons, you know, away from the farm at least. Anyway, she asked me yesterday if they'll wrap up her mummy when she's dead too. <laughs> oh dear. Mummies are a difficult subject the best of times, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, I didn't know what to say. See, I'd be happy having her wrapped up right now. Imagine the peace and quiet, along with the lowest grocery bill ever. Mm. But if they're going to wrap up Elsie, it'll cause a national shortage of bandages for sure. <laughs> As you know, me lovely vegan neighbour young Alice has been inviting me over to a farm for coffee and vegan cake once a week. Well, I wandered over to see her and she's decided to celebrate Earth Hour every Saturday now. Yep, so it's lights out for an hour every week. Not just once a year like everyone else, oh no, every week. Then she asked me if I'd do the same to help the planet. Well, I said, of course, I'd like to do it. But old Nan, you know, she's terrified of the dark. And the wife, Elsie, is terrified of the TV and microwave not working for such a long time, you know. <laughs> an hour is like a lifetime to an ardent TV dinner fan. In fact, after considering it further, I think I'd enjoy it more than the planet would actually, you know. An hour of peace sounds just perfect to me. <laughs> this is Ned Nat here for the Ned Nat Show. When or not here, you can find me and my shows at nednat.com. Well, me lovelies, I'm always getting nice messages from you, me listeners. I get a few questions too, and as you know, I feature them in me shows. I've kind of merged them with me Agony Uncle feature now, and the questions are still pouring in. So I'm having to pick a few that catch me eye each time. And I'm sorry if I didn't feature yours, but, you know, there's only one of me. Anyway, a few of them will really make you think. You know, I've got it all here on the Ned Nash Show. <laughs> right then, the first of me agony questions comes from Deborah in Dearborn. And she's worried about cloning. Hmm, cloning? Yep. She read an article on how scientists have cloned a ferret. Oh dear, do we really need more ferrets? Hmm? Anyway, the animal they used as a gene donor died 30 years ago. Yep, oh well, Deborah, there's still hope for me old Nan, you know, after all. <laughs> but why should Deborah be worried about cloned ferrets? Well, she reckoned it's made her study her husband more closely. Yep, her hubby. Seems... He has many ferret-like attributes. <laughs> well, for one, he's slinky, devious, and smells. <laughs> well, like she said, musky. Yep. <laughs> well, worse still, sometimes he doesn't use the regular toilet 
but use a corner of the living room. Mm. Are you sure it's, uh, you know, not a bad hygiene problem, really, Deborah, rather than just cloning? <laughs> well, all I can suggest is you speak to him about his weird habits first and see what he says. Yep. If he says nothing, just scratches himself and starts eating cat food. Well, just call the animal control, you know. Yep, they'll have him away in no time at all. <laughs> By the way, I read just recently they're talking about cloning a mammoth now. Yep, that's going to really make a mess around the house, isn't it? <laughs> of course, the first most popular mammal clone was Dolly the Sheep 25 years ago. Yep, yep, that's why I named my daughter Dolly. <laughs> You know, she's not cloned, but uh, sometimes, you know, I look at the wife, Elsie, and wish she was. <laughs> My second question comes from Mo in Minnesota. Yep. He's getting into a muddle over all these different spacecraft heading to Mars at once. Well, now he's heard about people starting a new city on the Red Planet. The worst part of this entire thing is that Mo wants my opinion on a Mars city. Oh, well, well, Mo, of course, it'd be nice to get away for a while. <laughs> I think I'd be bored silly, though, by a six-month journey to get there, wouldn't you? More so if it was in economy class, yep. Added to that, it cuts two ways. I mean, it's six months back home again. Added to that, you're always indoors when you get there. Also, that bad radiation is a problem, and worse still, you'll be stuck with a bunch of people you pretty much learn to hate. I mean, I find folks get on me nerves after a five-hour flight. Imagine 4,380 hours with someone who just got under your skin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can't just leave, can you? Nope, nope, nope. Find a connecting flight to another planet. Oh, no. It's up there with one of them little roach motels. Yeah, <laughs> you're stuck there. You can never leave. <laughs> but in any case, you know, you can uh, wait, I suppose, you know, like a regular cockroach. And then the next flight out of there is, a, is next year. Yeah. And when it finally shows, you're stuck for another endless journey. Yeah. Then halfway home, you break down, don't you? Yeah. So the space version of AAA is summoned. <laughs> Just hang on, we'll be around in about, well, call it three months, you know, asteroid activity permitting. <laughs> of course, you know, immediately those people, you know, those tow people and all that, you know, it's going to be four months, isn't it? Yep, not three. <laughs> you know, I think I'll stay here after all. You know, what's worse is every time I mention Mars to the wife Elsie, she's expecting candy to show up. <laughs> oh dear, wrong Mars. Next is from Wonder in Washington, and she's got a really simple question. Yep, down to Earth, or should I say here on Earth? Oh, sounds better, doesn't it? I had to answer this one because I always get the same question and hate repeating myself. The question is about me dog. What breed is he? Well, Wonder, there's a story about that. Yep, it goes back about six years. Well, here goes. There was a farmer not far from me Florida farm here, you know. Had a small place with no fences, and he used to breed the old German Shepherds. You know, with the best bloodlines, you know, charge a fortune for the puppies, you know, show dogs, all of them, you know, everything right with them. Then one afternoon, he broke his arm, fell off his tractor, rushed to hospital, yeah. When he was away, he forgot his best breeding female was on the loose, and the neighbours... Poodle Rottweiler mix was on the prowl. Oh dear, it happened. Yep. <laughs> Around 60 days later, you end up with a litter of. I should say, oh dear, again, no, but uh, yep, some pretty weird looking puppies. Two female, four male. He decided to let them stay, and once they were weaned, he gave them away for free. Yep. Well, a year later, they'd run around the community as free dogs do. <laughs> and mated with pretty much everything. <laughs> By the time young Clay arrived, he was a little mixed. Well, or maybe you'd say muddled. <laughs> the German Shepherd Poodle Rottweilers had become a German Shepherd Poodle Rottweiler Bulldog Labrador Great Dane Boxer Doberman Husky Mix. <laughs> oh 
of deer. I think there was even a canine dog in there and a chihuahua, but the chihuahua might not have been a fact because none of the other ones could uh, reach it or flatten it. I can't remember which way round. <laughs> so I wonder, to answer your question, well, I think I just did, didn't I? He's a pretty mixed up, mixed breed. <laughs> My next question comes from Caroline in the Carolinas. It's about horses. Yeah, well, I do have an horse, yeah. Bit of an old nag, to be honest. She's a long-in-the-tooth mare called Nan. Well, yep, I named her after my old mum. <laughs> anyway, the question is whether I'd consider using a horse instead of a tractor around the farm. Well, Caroline, as I said, she's a bit lame. No, not well, my mum as well, yeah, but the, the horse is a bit lame. <laughs> and I don't do much ploughing right now anyway. Although, I must say, I'm thinking about giving up on ends and farming cabbages. Yep. See, they don't stink, peck, or make a fuss. And cabbages grow well here in the Florida dirt. And they're very peaceful at like most green, you know. Yeah, I'd love to look after cabbage, kale and collards, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, I'm wandering off topic there again. So the horse tractor debate is simple, isn't it? Me tractor doesn't eat, in, you know, when it's not being used. It doesn't get miserable in the winter or in the rain. Yep. When I'm not using it, it just sits there. It doesn't spit at me, kick me. And there's something to be said for that. It doesn't attract the flies either. Or decide when it's going to leave the barn when I get going. Nope. So I'd say stick with the tractor. Mine's over 60 years old, and she's still not lame either. <laughs> Last up this time, I've got a weird question. It bothers me in more ways than one. It comes from Gary in Gary, Indiana. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Oh, well. Anyway, he wants to know what's so special about a Kenyan company that's making plastic bricks out of recycled plastic. He reckons it's because they've never heard of Lego down there. <laughs> but you've got a point there, Gary. I mean, Lego was around when I was a nipper, and I looked up this Kenyan company tonight and discovered a flaw in their product. Yep, a fatal one. Yep. They don't have those little bumps and sockets like the Lego. So, with a good wind, they'll just blow away, won't they? <laughs> That's it on my questions this time, but before I leave the subject, I just want to mention something that's troubled me for a long time. Yep, recycling. Everyone's suddenly at it, aren't they? You know, we used to collect aluminum foil for recycling when we were little kids. We used to even make little toys out of plastic bottles. You know, we were the original recyclers, but now everyone and his or her friend is trying to find a new way, aren't they? Well, I drive past the landfill near me farm and it stinks most days, like they all do. So I take the view if they want to wander around the local one, yep, fish out the plastic from the used cat litter and rotten food and everything else that's floating around up there, that's up to them. Sure it is, yep. I'll even wave to them on my way past. <laughs> this is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Show. When I'm not here, you can find me and my shows at nednat.com. Rush, me part-time incontinent political commentating neighbour has always got something to say. And he's more confident since he's got a port of potty in the front yard. This time, he just steered away from me listeners' questions and went straight into his latest debate. His folks have decided that the internet is the number one socialist vehicle on earth and makes the Democrats look like amateurs. Yep, oh dear, that's his point of view. It came from nowhere, so I just listened on. Rush says everybody gets to comment on everybody. Everyone expects everything for free, and nobody makes a profit except the big retailers. Added to that, they don't like to hear the truth from good old Republicans like him. Oh, particularly conservatives, he says. That means it's definitely socialist, says Rush. <laughs> well, gotta go, he says, and off he went. You know, I don't really know what to say, but hidden in Russia's agenda somewhere, you know, there's a few good points sometimes, you know. A few are even factual, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> this is Ned Narry with the Ned Nat Show, and when I'm not here, you can find me and my shows at nednat.com. Obviously, you recall me long-lost neighbour, Skip Natter. 
showed up unexpectedly in my farm and stayed. Although he thinks he can talk anybody into anything, this time around I had a great surprise for him. Yep, April Fool's Day. I did as I said and told him the feds were looking for him and waiting at the gate. It's the fastest I've ever seen him move. Yep, over the back fence in the direction of Ding Dang's current trailer home. Oh, <laughs> I haven't seen him since, but mind you, if you look at the atlas, there's actually a place called Moron in Mongolia. <laughs> oh dear, well, maybe he's finally made it there. <laughs> By the way, Skips reminded me as usual of another comment. That's right, me agent, 50%, has lined me up with a new ad this week. It's kind of different, say the least. So here goes, me lovelies. Are you a regular listener to the Ned Nash Show? Well, just remember, if Ned's doing well, it helps the New York economy. <laughs> and that's important. Yep, that's right, New York, home to 50%. Enterprises Inc., a third generation syndicate owned ad agency established in 1924. The company president, Mr. 50%, invites you to listen to the Ned Nat show at absolutely no cost to him. <laughs> Visit nednatter.com every week on a Wednesday. Yup, season three is out today. So head over to nednatter.com, but remember, don't call him, Ned's only got voicemail. And it's usually full. <laughs> hmm. Oh dear, well I wasn't expecting that, me lovelies, but obviously 50% trying to keep on top of this. <laughs> this is Ned Nat here for the Ned Nat Show. And I'm not here, you can find me and my shows at nednat.com. Whichever way you dice it, the Ned Nat Show is unpasteurised and unfiltered. But that's all, me lovelies, and on that note I better go. So until next time, I'm Ned Natter. Just remember, farmers are getting older, some more than others. It's time some new blood came down on the farm and gave us an end. Shite madness without us. You wouldn't have anything to eat. And without me, your Wednesdays won't be so much fun. <laughs> In the meantime, you can find me and me shows at nednatter.com, as I mentioned, along with them social media links. Come by and say hi. All me new shows are up on YouTube now, too. You know, so you can subscribe there if you're into that. Thanks so much for listening. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and I hope you'll join me on the Ned Natter Show again. So until then, keep a smile on your face. Think positive and don't sweat the small stuff. The grass is not always green on the other side. It might just be a freeway. <laughs> Goodbye, my lovelies. <laughs>